Greetings viewers, Eric the Car Guy here. Thank you very much for tuning in today. In today's episode, I'm working on my daughter's 2004 Honda Element. Drove her to school this morning. Well, she drove herself to school this morning and I was the passenger. And I was a rather chilly passenger because the passenger side window, well, it wouldn't go up. In fact, it's stuck down. So I'm gonna show you how to diagnose and repair this window regulator problem on this 2004 Honda Element. The reason I know that this is a mechanical problem with the window regulator and not an electrical problem is quite simple. I listen to what happens when I hit the switch. You can sort of hear crunchy noises. So that tells me the electrical portion, the switch and everything else is working. It's just the window cannot mechanically go up and down. Job one is going to be remove this inner door panel. To do that, I'm gonna start with this piece behind the mirror. It's just clipped on and I'm gonna pull straight back and drop it on the floor. Next up, I'm gonna remove this cover behind the door handle. There's a little spot in the top that I can get into with my pocket screwdriver, pull out the cover. Behind that, there are two Phillips head screws to remove. With those screws removed, I can pull forward and out on the door handle and we can disconnect it. Down inside here, you'll see that little purple clip. You have to push it off of the rod like that and then you can lift the rod up off there it goes should just pull right up out of there then i'm also going to remove this rear cover which like the other one should pull i might need two hands for this ah finally okay so there's this one feisty clip and then this other piece should be attached but it looks like somebody had an issue with this one before. Uh, it looks like they tried to glue this area where the screw is. So don't suffer the same fate if you can avoid it. Now here's the important one. Here's the screw I think a lot of people forget. Behind this little cover underneath the armrest, there is another screw. Phillips head screw again. Next, remove the speaker grill. And you can just, should be able to just pull back on it as soon as you get purchased somewhere. There it is and pull that piece off. Now you need to remove the uh, speaker. There's three screws that hold that guy in. And take the speaker out. And then you can unplug it here. Just squeeze the sides of the connector and you can pull that right out. Be careful of these cones. They get old and brittle and you can damage them. Although, Speaker replacement on these is pretty easy. In fact, I'll link a video in the description showing you how to do that very thing. With all those fasteners out, you can remove the inner door panel now. And you do that, it's held in by plastic clips. I start at the bottom and I just pull straight out. And then once everything is unclipped and it's flopping around like this, lift straight up on it. But beware, there's still gonna be an electrical connection right here for this window. And now you undo that electrical connection. Try not to stress the wire too much. And with this clip, there's just a little tab that you push on this. And this is virtually identical to the driver's side, except for this might be a little bit of a bigger switch or a bigger plug because there are more things uh, in that switch than there is in this one. What you're looking at now is called a vapor barrier. And believe it or not, water is allowed to go inside the door and drain out some holes in the bottom and this helps prevent like your windows from fogging up. So if this goes missing, sometimes what you'll have is a vehicle that when it rains, the windows uh, on that affected door get fogged up more than the rest. Anyway, it's held on by some glue and a plastic clip up here and a plastic clip over here. Although you don't have to remove the whole thing, you just kind of have to get it out of the way uh, to one side, which is what I'm gonna do. I find that a pocket screwdriver is helpful to pull this guy out. And I like having this little plastic clip because if the adhesive doesn't stick again, which sometimes it won't, it's helpful to have that clip to hold it in place. And this has obviously already been out of here by the looks of it, because normally it would be a lot more difficult to do this. Sometimes I've even had to come in with like a razor blade and cut this stuff as I go. And believe it or not, you can stick it back up on there. That is possible. So I'm beginning to wonder if this is not the first window problem this vehicle's had. Okay, now here is sort of a clip. Let's 
safety on this side, so this wire is being held on by this clip. I'm gonna come in behind it with my pocket screwdriver and try to release the tabs on it. Ouch. While also trying not to stab myself. I just went in and I pushed in on either side of that to avoid more damage. But really, what I'm looking for is access to these three fasteners right here. So on mine, you can see that the window is down. You can see the back of the window here. And yeah, I might be able to move it. No, I can't. But what I'll do, I'll turn the key on and plug this connector to the window switch back in and see if I can run it up so I can get some enough slack in the cable to move the window upward. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get the window in position right about here. There's two 10 millimeter fasteners that hold the bottom of the window on, which we're gonna have to disconnect and remove. So we need to get the window up into this position. And this is how I'm gonna do it in my case. Okay, the key is on. I'm gonna plug the switch back in and just try to run the window up. So that loosened things up for me. So that's as far as it'll go. All right, I can unplug it. Turn my key back off. I don't wanna leave the ignition on if I can help it. But now, I'm hoping to move the window up enough to where I can get to these two 10 millimeter fasteners. With those fasteners undone, you can remove the window, pick it up carefully, sneak it right out past the front and put it someplace safe. Now, what can also happen with these that causes a similar problem is these uh, attachments to the window here can come loose and can break off. And when they do, you get a very similar problem. Uh, so look out for that. Make sure these are secure. There is a special glue to reattach these. You don't necessarily have to buy a new window. Sometimes you can reattach it with the glue. A few more fasteners to remove and an electrical connection to unplug that one right there. And then similar to what I did over here with this, I try to sneak in behind. Sometimes I can even get my finger back in here and undo this plastic clip, or I can just push it off of here. We'll see what happens. Anyway, all you need to do with these three fasteners is loosen them. You see these large openings? That allows you to actually move the motor out of place. This is the back of the motor assembly. As far as the rest of the regulator, there's one, two, three, and then this screw, again, like the motor, doesn't need to be completely removed. It just needs to be loosened and we can pick it up past that. Now we may need to remove these fasteners once it gets removed and then transfer them over to the new part. I've got an aftermarket part. Honda parts a lot of times come with uh, at least the, these fasteners that hook in, uh, but aftermarket ones don't come with them. So I may have to put, take them off anyway, but I wanna put them in before I install the new part because this makes it very easy to hang the new regulator and motor assembly. I'm actually gonna come in through the speaker hole down here, grab a hold of the motor and put that through. Then the other part of the regulator lifts that off its mount there. And then this large opening can be where everything exits. Oh, it appears there's one more attachment for the uh, wire for the motor. I think it's pretty obvious what happened. It's not supposed to be like that. Upon closer inspection, I don't believe this to be a Honda part. Not that the Honda ones don't fail on a regular basis, but this looks aftermarket already, so this may have already been replaced once. Here's my new part. I'm gonna transfer over those fasteners, those three there, and then for this upper left side here. The new assembly doesn't have any of these clips on the wire or this clip on the connector, and at the very least, I wanna transfer this one over, and to do that, I'm just gonna sneak in with my pocket screwdriver, pry it back like that, and pull it off of there, and I'll be able to install this on the new connector. To transfer it over to the new connector, just gonna take it, you see how one side's got those stops sticking out? That goes in the back. Just stick it in there, slide it, and it should click right into place. As long as we're here, we might as well get these started. These are all the same length, and then, this one up here on this side. 
It's pretty much the reverse of what I did when I took it out. Hooking that one on. This must be some kind of universal motor thing, whatever, because the wire goes in a completely different routing than the other one. And it just sneaks around. So these clips that were on here are now irrelevant. Anyway, I'll install the other fasteners. Yeah, I suppose it will. It's not too stressed out. Pretty convenient of them to have this in position to where we can just drop the window in and install the fasteners. Gently lower this guy back down in here. Don't try to get it in the track until you're down in most of the way. And then you can try to get it into its track, lower it down till it makes contact with the regulator. You're ready to install the fasteners. These aren't quite lined up right. I'll just raise it up just a touch. That's better. Just to be on the safe side, I would recommend, particularly with aftermarket parts, that you run the window all the way down and all the way up just to make sure there are no issues first before you put everything back together. I would leave it down so that it makes the door card easier to install. But that works. I think it's time to put it back together. This is pretty much the reverse of what you just did. Uh, things to make sure of is that you get this rod through here and that you also get this electrical connection back through the vapor barrier. My little plastic guy is gonna be helpful for getting things back into position. This not sticking is nothing that I'm gonna lose sleep over. But if you really care about it, I suppose like some body adhesive or something could put this back on here. Plug in the electrical connection. And then when you reinstall this, you gotta get it hooked on like it was before. Feed the door lock through. You gotta do like four things at once. And make sure this speaker wire doesn't get lost. There we go. So it's just got to make sure to fall down into that upper lip. I should be ready to redo my plastic clips. And some of those might have popped out when you removed it. I didn't notice any on mine. But you might want to take those out of the door card or take those out of the door and reinstall them in the door card before you install it here. And that way you get a secure fastening. Once you're in position, a few smacks pretty much there and then just install all the stuff that you removed again be careful with speaker cones and for the door handle don't forget to hook it in and then move the clip over onto the rod so it stays secure it doesn't pop back out hook down first and then hook like that bottom of this cover goes in first and then the top clips in I can hear it actuating. I always like to verify it. Now the upper cover which just kind of sits in here. I need to repair the other one and we'll install that. We're all fixed now. You notice these two indentations here. That's what this has got to slide down into and then you fasten it down and it's just the opposite when you go to remove it. So try to pull the bottom straight out and then slide it up off of here. Now you're in. One last check to verify its operation. In my experience, this is kind of a common failure for a lot of vehicles. It's kind of a cheap design, but I think that works for a lot of manufacturers as far as getting it out the door. It's not that difficult to replace. You just gotta be careful of things as you remove them from the inside of the door. And I hope the information that I've provided you with today will help you do that. I'll put links in the description to parts, tools, anything else that you might need to know about, including additional videos about Honda Elements. So check the description for additional information. Also check the description for a link to ericthecarguide.com, which is where I ask you to go if you have automotive questions not covered in this video. Other than that, thank you so much for watching today. I hope to see you next time. I post videos on Friday. Be safe, have fun, stay dirty. 
I'll see you then. Bye-bye. <laughs>